We have Reese P. I don't know why that just sounds really dirty to me. <laughs> that just have I just have a gross. That's a grody name. Reese P. <laughs> I'm by it just it's disgusting to me. And he watched the Prince video and he didn't like it, so he's gonna weigh in. And we'll see what we can do for him. Reese P. says. You're wrong. He does knock on doors. I have one friend that lives in Chaska. <laughs> Seeing him at her door knocking one morning. That's a Jehovah's Witness. Actually went into her house, speaking the word to her. I have another friend that goes to Chaska. Oh, he goes to the same hall that Prince goes to in Eden Prairie. As referred to, they refer to him as Brother Prince there. You should really take this video down and try to do some more research. Because you are straight looking like a straight up fool. That seemed redundant. And yes, there are many mansions and money in Minneapolis. You would know that if you had been here when Prince lived there. I work security for entertainers, singers, and bands that came to Minneapolis. From 1994 to... I'm not going to make you... I'll read this. It is a... He goes on this diatribe here. It's paragraphs long. I'm not even scrolling down. Good Lord, look at this. He goes on a uh, rampage here. Talking about he name drops, name dropping Jimmy Jam, Morris Day, and he goes on this big long spiel. It reminds me of I'm for for some reason this is reminding me of the uh, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back movie. If you've seen it, well anyway, there's these two drugged out guys there. They are just blown out of their minds on drugs, and all day they stand on this street corner. Talk about Morris Day and how he's the awesomest guy who's ever lived and how they uh, they model his their lives after him because he is the greatest human being of all time. And anyway, there's this 12-year-old standing next to him and said, Who the fuck is Morris Day? <laughs> and the, uh, the drugged-out guy dr grabs the kid and slams him against the wall. And it's kind of the, uh, the running joke uh, throughout the movie. Is that uh, these guys? These guys that are so out of touch uh, with with the world around them that they don't they don't understand that Morris Day is irrelevant and nobody knows who he is. And they're just it's kind of the gag throughout the whole movie that they keep going places and people say who what who's Morris Day? What are you talking about? <laughs> it just reminded me of this for some reason. At one point they even go they even go to this public place where there's a computer and they get on the internet and start. Uh, Arguing with people about Morris Day, and people are like, what are you talking about? Anyway, just remind them of that a little bit. Have you ever heard the term, you can't build Rome in one day? Well, I've heard, uh, yes, I've heard that term. Have you heard the term or expression, you can't make somebody into a Jehovah's Witness in 15 years? No, you haven't heard that one? Neither have I. What do you expect? He's a mega star musician with a lot of temptations. What temptations are you speaking of? And why would this man have any? This man has every available opportunity to him to shut the world out and live a chaste lifestyle. There's nothing, pre nothing prevents him from doing that. He doesn't have to go to a job and associate with worldly people. He can rid himself of that... Uh, that, that thing that mars every other Jehovah's Witness existence, that they have to, oh, we have to brush elbows with people in the world. You don't have to be around the world. The only contact you have to have with the outside world is witnessing to them. Which, apparently, you and Morris Day <laughs> go and witness to people in Chaska. Whatever. You just went into someone's house in Chaska and witnessed to them. I'm sure that really happened, and it's not a made-up lie. 
You couldn't even get a girl that Prince didn't want. LOL. Irrelevant. So, of course, you are going to hate. You know, the music industry is full of people who are doing better than me. I don't hate them. And you expect him to quit his job as a musician? Yes, that is what I expect. It makes sense, doesn't it? Why is he still doing this? He hasn't made enough of Satan's money in his lifetime. He needs more. He needs more of Satan's money in these final moments before Armageddon. What was I thinking? Thinking oh, he should quit his job as a musician and pioneer. What was I thinking? I made an ass out of myself. And give up what keeps him alive? Excuse me. What keeps servants of Jehovah alive? According to Psalms 33, is Jehovah himself looking out for us. He provides our daily bread. Bibles, uh, you have Jesus. He said in the Bible that uh, Jehovah, do it, doing Je Jehovah's will is his daily bread. <laughs> That's his food. It's to do the will of him that sent me. And not for Prince, though. Prince, what keeps Prince alive is being a jackass. Anyway, anyway I'm sorry, that went off the rails. That went off the rails in the worst kind of way. Well, we'll return now. Making music, hmm. Making music keeps Prince alive. I know someone really needs to quit their job as a journalist, hint. Well, yeah, you may have a point there. <laughs> I really do need to quit. Why am I doing this? I don't remember. So you didn't like my little insult above? You, wait, this is all in the same comment. How do you know that I didn't like your insult? <sighs> I, and for all you know, I loved that insult. It took it to heart. You never even gave me a chance, you dick. It's true, though. One clue would be to live by this motto. The best use of life is love. The best expression of love is time. And the best... Well, I, I, what is that? I'm going to give you some letters to study before you do your much-needed research on prints. P, B, and J? Fucking my god, what? No, I have some letters for you, Buck. Y-H-W-H. Learn it. Learn the fear of God. Now, after you figure that abbreviation out, I don't have time for this. Get out of here. Please pray to God for forgiveness. Are you talking to Prince now? I know you're not talking to me. Well, apparently he is. Well, we... Um, we just write a little something back for Reese P. I don't know. That just sounds gross to me. Every time I see that name, Reese P., I just imagine dirty orange-yellow piss hitting a dirty gas station toilet. Hi, Reese. Can you tell me what third eye is? And why would a worshiper of Jehovah the true God be promoting this? P.S. It's a disfellowshipping event. And I'll show it to you. <laughs> we have a... Link here, Third Eye. Hey, Prince's band is also called the Third Eye Girl Band. By coincidence, but what the hell is that? Well, it could mean anything. Who knows? It's pretty simple for you. Um, false religion. I'm not gonna read all this shit to you because it doesn't matter. Some, some ancient bullshit. Baal worship. The worship of Nimrod. Long story short, it is something directly connected to false religion. Look, if you wore a if you wore a cross around your neck into the kingdom hall, that'd be that'd be a disfellowshipping offense in itself. At least with a cross, if somebody, if somebody has a cross in their house or a cross around their neck, at least you could give them the benefit of the doubt 
that their heart is in the right place and they're just very confused, this is false religion. This is God, what, 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 mystic, mystical Hinduism, chakra, oh, that's the kingdom hall where Prince goes to, new age, psychological clairvoyance, oh my God, <laughs> this is not okay, this is disfellowshipping event, oh, <laughs> I have a surprise for you though, Prince isn't going to get disfellowship for this. He calls the name of his band, the Third Eye Band. He has a song called Third Eye Girl. And he wears a third, everyone was decorated with a third eye. A symbol of false religion. And you people complain about Christmas lights. Huh, <laughs> people stop. You worry about Christmas stocking hanging on somebody's chimney. Fudge. Look at that. Look at this bastard. <laughs> Unreal. Unbelievable. This is just a... If there's, no, there's no conversation here! There's nothing we need to be talking about! This is disfellowshipping. A disfellowshipping offense. By the way, I'd love to bring charges against Prince. How would I go about doing that? Can I call up this Prairie Eden Kingdom Hall and ask to speak to Brother Prince? No. Well, I'm, I'm within my rights to do that, or, I, or am I not? Could I not say, I, I, I'm going about my scriptural business here. I have an accusation against Brother Prince, as he is called in Chakra. <laughs> and so I'm going about the scriptural method of making things right with Brother Prince. You think they would allow me to get anywhere near Brother Prince? I want to go speak to him. And when he rebuffs me, I want to go take a second person with me to get him to, to encourage him to go to the elders and confess what he's done. Oh, what? No? I can't go to Prince's house and do that. Well, what about Larry Graham? I want that son of a bitch disfellowship. Can I have a meeting with Brother Graham? Because I have an accusation against him. Oh, what? Oh, I, I can't have a meeting with Brother Graham? <laughs> Believe me, I, I'd make the 10-hour drive up there to, 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 to do that, to make it happen. No? Out of the question? What a dick. What a dick. Look at this dick. He knows he's getting away with something. Cam Wad. Oh, <laughs> that's a gross name. Oh, it sounds like tampon and what's it? Well, let's shoot our Tam Wads. <laughs> that's not appetizing. May the one that is not sinned cast the stone. They're talking about Prince. They're complaining about the Prince video again. Saying, may the one that is not sinned cast the first stone. It's amazing. All, you know, all my years at the Kingdom Hall, I think I, saw, I, I, think I heard somebody refer to that uh, passage twice. It's not, a, it's not a big hit thing with Jehovah's Witnesses until you start talking about Prince. Or the governing body, and then they roll out. Oh, remember, the, not, the one that is not sin may cast the first stone. Jehovah has the perfect mold. May you find some love that the world hates. The world just hates that love that Jehovah's Witnesses have. And I said, Tam. That thought about the one who has not sinned casting the first stone is a beautiful sentiment. Where may I find it? I have a 2013 edition of the New World Translation here in front of me. <laughs> Calm down. Easy, easy. <laughs> We're just having a bit of fun here. Uh, kind of an inside joke, uh, which uh, Tam may not have been aware of, is that the Watchtower Society, uh, about a year ago, uh, discontinued that portion of the Bible. It no longer exists. It's it's gone. 
This very, very famous part of the Bible is just gone. It just doesn't exist anymore. Not in the world of Jehovah's Witnesses. It's gone. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tam. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't shoot that Tam at me. I'm just letting you know. And anyway, so I'm just poking a bit of fun at Tam here. Uh, I, I don't think Tam was fully aware of that. That uh, this this particular portion of the uh, of the gospel account where Jesus says, "Oh, cast a first stone at somebody. Don't do that." Well, for some reason, they. Uh, removed it. They clipped it away like a coupon. Yeah, they're saving lots of money. They're they're saving paper, saving paper by clipping out select selected portions. It's the it's the revised, edited. It's the Reader's Digest version of the Bible. And um, anyway, Tam Tam apparently goes and looks for this part of the Bible, realizes it's no longer there, uh, and so they have to go in a different direction here. Uh, and quotes. Romans 2.1. Interesting that... I, I find it interesting that Romans apparently is... Uh, look, the reason they, they clipped away this part of the Bible is they said they couldn't authenticate it. They have no reason to believe that this is a, an authentic part of the original Bible, unlike the rest of the Bible, which has obviously never been tampered with. Oh, we have no proof that this uh, particular uh, portion here has, uh, for all we know, it's fake. And so they... Removed it. Okay. But then apparently this apostle who wrote Romans was directly influenced by this portion of the Bible. Or if you believe it's a real event, maybe he knew about it. Maybe he was standing there. <laughs> no, calm down. That didn't happen. But it's just very, it's, it's very, I don't know, noteworthy that this, that anyway, I'm not going to make you read this. Oh, therefore you are an excusable old man. You can damn yourself and as much as you press the same things. And it was kind of directly, it appears to be directly influenced by this part of the Bible that they discontinued and canceled. And I said, Tam, I'm still not seeing anything there about casting stones. It's not there. And we both, look, we both know you were quoting a part of the Bible that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> according to the actions of your religious leaders. And I say, I don't, I don't see the casting stones part. Are you familiar with Revelation 22, 18 and 19? And uh, as you know, that is the, it's a, the spell the, the Bible writers put on people. Anyone that removes something from the Bible, uh, a malediction be upon you. Well, uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses removed something from the Bible and uh, pfft, squat. Nothing happened to him. Nothing's going to happen to him. What does that mean? Apparently nothing. <laughs> There's this curse in the Bible that will befall you if you, you'll be eaten up with worms and, sh and they will eat your guts and entrails. You remove something from the Bible or nothing could happen, which is exactly what's going to happen. And, well, Tam Wad doesn't want to think about that part of the Bible either. So they, they act like they, oh, well, yes, Revelation 22. But they'll quote a different part of it. Oh, he also tells me. I'm not going to make you read all this. But anyway, we just had a bit of fun with Tam Wad here. Here's what you can't do. And I'm not, I'm not a hard case. I'm not a stickler. What you can't do is chop out a section of the Bible and then continue to quote it. It's just a mistake that Tam made, but that's what you can't do. That's that's a bridge beyond what is uh, doable anymore. You, you want to bridge too far there, <laughs> and it's over. That part of the Bible is over. It was there for 2,000 years, and now it's just doesn't... It's We're going to make a break with it. For the next 2,000 years, it won't be in the Bible. Paul Richards. So you posted about Prince not being a true Jehovah's Witness. Which I question as well. My question to you is, what do you believe? Secondly, if you believe, why not just share the truth about Jehovah God rather than spread hate about Prince? Just food for your thoughts. Christ bless you. Oh, Paul, you misunderstand my beliefs. Jehovah's Witnesses being hypocrites about Prince is what I believe. And that is why I share. P.S. Making note of someone's hypocrisy is not hating them. It's just not. See, I, I feel it would be more hateful to Prince 
if I let him get away with his hypocrisy? If you see somebody that's way out of line and you get... Yeah, are you doing them a big favor by not saying anything for the rest of your life? Shit. How, how old do I gotta be before I can... Well, I say, what, 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 what's the, what's the cutoff year? What, can it be like the year 2045? And I say, boy, a lot of, a lot of times gone under the bridge. What was that Prince thing? <laughs> no, too soon? Jeepers. How long, how long do people have to keep silent about Prince? What, they have, they have TMZ, it comes on TV every day, every, there's TV, they have to view the, 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 all, all the TV shows during the day, Tom, Tom, talk about everything in the world, print, you can't talk about Prince. You can't talk about Prince. And we have Smagisa. <laughs> he do not respect another human being feeling well destroying good name i've seen destroying spelled a lot of ways but this one just set a record <laughs> and his reputation not one but the whole congregation on the entire earth this can be sue for this now if he hates jw guts he might as well show top I think I will shoot up. Oh, oh, you meant shut up. Oh, uh, what did I say? Uh, uh, now, if he is not educated, it's his problem. But no reason to be ignored of laws. Smagisa. Smagisa. You still have not explained how me noticing that Prince lives a double life translates to hating J.W.'s guts. That's pretty extreme. God, who talks that way? You say things you too much. But first, you must admit that you are dispelled from Jehovah's Witnesses. I will never admit that. Because I'm not. Because dispelled is not a real thing. I will never admit that. This is why you hate and say things. Well, probably, but you'll never be able to prove it. Because there's no such thing as dispelling Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> I went on a technicality. You do not get and fully understand, see? Kindly please say things just for yourself alone. I'm going to do that from now on. From now on, I will kindly say things alone to myself. That if you still respect yourself and believe, see, okay, thank you. Smagisa, you say I should be sued for character attack of Prince and J.W.'s reputation and good name? <laughs> As if Prince had a good name. But then you attack my own character as dispelled from Jehovah's Witness? That is why you hate and say things? Hypocrisy here? Should I sue you? Hmm. That's what I, I should start suing people. I, not for myself. I just want to get Prince's good name back. I want to sue people on his behalf. And ride his coattails. See if it works. <laughs> I love you guys. I love you. I love you. Oh, I love you. I love you. <laughs> Timothy Fisher, I love you. I love you. Timothy Fisher, who the hell is this grease bag? Well, he's going on holy hell. He wrote a long paragraph here. They're not called paragraphs anymore, Grandpa. They're called paragraphs here. <laughs> on 4chan. And he watched the Terrence Howard video? Well, why is he writing all this shit? This doesn't have any context on there. Honor does not mean worship. The bib key tells us to honor our father. What is it? He's talking about pagan gods, Christ, the work he told him to do. Oh, Lord. This has no bearing on the Terrence Howard video. Oh, he's counting time. I get it now. He's counting, well, you, you folks may have heard, there's a new thing. 
that the young kids at JW.org are doing. There's been a minor adjustment. Yeah, just a minor one. They can now count field service time on electronic media sites. Good God! Brace for impact. Well, you're going to see a lot of spam. A lot of spamming on videos, but... Um, hey, I'm a nice guy. I let people do it. I let people, hey, my videos get spammed all the time. I let people do it. Because, I, I, I don't know. Maybe should I stop? Should I, should I stop this? No. These people need to make their time. <laughs> so we let them. And he goes on in great detail here. Talk about, God, what, what, oh, he's, he's trying to debunk the Trinity doctrine. <laughs> He plainly states his father is greater than him. Is he praying to himself in the Garden of Gethsemane? And how does one resurrect himself? Oh, I have an answer for that. He didn't, because it didn't happen. It's a made-up story. Ah, I'm just kidding. Anyway, he never accepted worship from humans on earth but always God credit for the miracles he performed. Also, their knocking indoors doesn't build up credit in heaven or anything. Stop. This is where I jump in. I don't care about the rest of the, the, the rest of, the, of this hooey. You just lied on my channel, dude. You lied. Their door knocking... Their knocking on doors doesn't build up credit in heaven or anything. He's talking about Jehovah's Witnesses and their door-to-door -door activity. It is not something that they do to build up credit or anything. Liar. That is exactly what Jehovah's Witnesses are doing by going out in service. And you know it, you lying son of a bitch. They do it because they love what they have learned. And they want to share it with others. That is not the primary reason that Jehovah's Witnesses go out in service. That is a lie. Hope this explains their beliefs a little bit better. So you're you're a <laughs> you're an outsider explaining there. Huh, see, I was thinking you were probably a Jehovah's Witness. No, you're just a bystander who uh, knows something about Jehovah's Witnesses, so I'll straighten it out. <laughs> As for the guy trying to tie Terrence Howard to them, would anyone care if he was a Catholic or a Muslim or a Baptist? No. But Terrence Howard is the one that makes a big fuss about being a Jehovah's Witness. He's the one that makes videos on YouTube about how he wish he could just be a Jehovah's Witness. But he can't control his pee-pee. And so he'll just be the guy that narrates documentaries about Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> he states in the interview that he doesn't qualify to be a JW. I'll say, <laughs> makes sense. Why would that make sense? It doesn't make sense to me. Everyone else qualifies to be a Jehovah's Witness. You complete the required brochure. You've met God's requirement. It's 28 pages long. He learned the truth in, 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 when he, before he was 20. <laughs> when he shacked up with a JW family's daughter. <laughs> he, learned, he was a worldly boyfriend that learned the truth. Man, he's known the truth since, what, 1985? Good God! And this makes sense to you. Shame on you. Makes sense. How does this make sense? When you learn the truth, you either stand with Jehovah or you stand with Satan's world. There is no fit sitting with Jehovah. He doesn't accept it. This doesn't make sense to Jehovah, it makes sense to you? Because nobody can, can explain to Jehovah why they're, they just don't have what it takes to be JW. He would have to change a lot about himself to do that. That's what everyone is expected to do. You don't make excuses for them. What about the homosexuals making tight pants? 
They would just have to change too much about themselves to become acceptable to Jehovah, right? So you make an excuse for them. No, you don't? Huh. Well, that makes sense. Appreciate the stock. I don't even know what that means. Oh, I do know what that means. He appreciates the documentary, Knocking, a story of Jehovah's Witnesses, a puff piece produced by Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, I, I don't mean it was produced by Jehovah's Witnesses. It was an uh, independent film. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. It was independently produced. That's just a coincidence that it looks exactly like a Watchtower production. With Watchtower music, Watchtower camera. Ah! It's just a coincidence that uh, it gives a very neutral view of the issue. Directed by someone who was raised as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, but is somehow neutral to the whole thing. <laughs> How about that? Amazingly, a documentary about a group of people that do not co-op with Satan's media. In fact, they hate Satan's media. <laughs> they don't trust Satan's media and they der derided every chance they get, but for some reason, they cooperated in the making of this documentary that was completely neutral, but turned out to be a very puffy piece. <laughs> oh, that worked out in the Watchtower Society. Uh, it worked out in their favor. Oh, Jehovah showed fortune on this account. Usually the media is controlled by Satan, but <laughs> this time it just happened to be a neutral view. It was very positive of Jehovah's Witnesses and only gave one side of the story. Good job, PBS. By hiring a man who beat a Jehovah's Witness woman to narrate a program about Jehovah's Witnesses. Terrence Howard was arrested for beating his ex-JW wife. And then he goes on PBS and hosts a documentary about Jehovah's Witnesses. What does that mean? I don't even know. What is going on? Uh, I don't know, folks. This is... Uh, it's out of control. Uh, we're just trying to get through this. I'm not going to make it. Timothy. That's not fully true, Timothy. JWs must knock on doors, whether they love it or not. They are required. Don't try bending the facts here on my channel. You won't get away with it. See, I'm a nice guy. I, I let, I'm not going to remove his spam comments. I'll let Timothy spam on here and make his time. Oh, <laughs> why not? It's a drop in the bucket. Who cares? But I'm not going to have you ping on my window and then tell me it's sprinkling outside. <laughs> Just some donuts getting sprinkled. And Timothy Fisher, he's back. I tried to kindly put him in his place, but he got he wants to get spicy with me. Timothy Fisher says, JW Fairy Tale. Wrong again, sir. I have been one for many years. Wait, you've been a Jehovah's Witness for many years? Well, why did your original comments on my channel act like you were a neutral third party? You dick. I go out because I want to. I can't get over this. You originally came on this channel presenting yourself as a, a bystander that just happened to know a few things about Jehovah's Witnesses and so you were going to set the facts straight. You cock. I, this is, the, this is uh, a great example of JW dishonesty. He didn't say he was not a Jehovah's Witness, but he led... Everyone in the comments section to believe that he was just a random person who came along. And uh, it turns out Timothy Fisher says, I have been one for many years. I go out because I want to. You are not thrown out for not doing it. Nobody said you're thrown out for not doing it. You are considered inactive. You are considered inactive and encouraged to go. But you are not forced to. I said you're for, but, but forced to. You have to keep in mind you're talking about the Jehovah's Witness definition of forced, which may be different than your definition of force. They're they're talking about it you're, that you have chains and shackles and somebody standing behind you with a pitchfork. You have guns pointed at you. That's their definition of force too. And you used to say, oh, you forced me to do all this stuff when I was a kid. Nobody forced you. We don't even have guns in our house. I'm sorry you feel the way you do. My feelings are irrelevant. Yeah, we're not talking about how I feel. We're talking about reality. Jehovah's Witnesses are... Hey, I'm not making this up!
That's the number one thing you have to do when you're a Jehovah's Witness. Well, the number one thing is to obey. But what is the number one thing they want you to obey about? Going out in service. Right? Am I a liar? We are kind people. Irrelevant. Again, this is, this is one of these blanket sta statements that the Jehovah's Witness propagandists make. We are kind people. Well, what does that mean? That's a, that's a subjective thing that could mean anything. Are you kind to chipmunks? I don't know what that means. Are you so kind that you uh, do, do, do charitable acts all day? Well, no, Jehovah's Witnesses don't really do charity, but we're kind people. Um, I don't know. It's, I, we don't get into debates, but if this is your channel, then you should put facts on it. There's another great video on YouTube where somebody is standing outside of Jehovah's Witness with a big sign that says JW Facts. It's a website where you can go to and learn facts about Jehovah's Witnesses are usually critical facts, but facts nonetheless. And the, the, the Jehovah's Witnesses there, they formed, they got all the biggest, fattest guys they could to form a human, a human fence so that people couldn't see the side that said fact. Well, what does it matter? But anyway, I think it's funny that he said, oh, I just want you to put the facts on it. And then somebody's holding up a sign that says JW Facts, and they literally try to block out the, th they, they go to the great extent of forming a human shield to stop somebody from finding out there's a place where you can find out facts about Jehovah. I can see by your name, you are probably a former witness mad about being disfellowshipped. I was mad a long time before I got disfellowshipped, bro. <laughs> and and I, I'm glad that you were able to presume facts by somebody by looking at their name. What a dick. Sorry but I was responding to another person's post. Not yours. You didn't respond to anyone's post, bitch. There was no response. And you, know, you just posted. You're, oh. There was, no, there was no hashtag or anybody's name in front of your post. It was just a post. It was just a freestanding post. Not yours. If you don't want to sing it, then don't post flat out lies. I'm sorry, but I feel the need to defend my faith. But you won't engage in a debate. How does that work? You have the need to defend your faith, but you won't debate anyone. Well, it's the hit and run tactics of Jehovah's Witnesses. They, um, they, they don't stick around for any kind of response. I'm not trying to be rude, and I'm sorry if this comes across that way. Just so everyone reading this knows, for real factual answers, about just who JWs are and what they actually believe, go to JW.org. What's that? I've never heard of it. Hope this helps. Not going to respond again, but thanks for hearing me out. Fuck you. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, did I say that out loud? Oh, I'm sorry. I have zero patience and zero respect for douchebags like Timothy. You do not merit any respect. I will not entertain your notions. I will not treat you with the slightest bit of dignity. You don't deserve any Timothy Fisher, you douchebag. You are a... Anyway. <laughs> I'll just think it in my head. I was going to say he's a freaking liar. Anyway, I felt compelled to post a warning to my viewers. Felt they're entitled to it. Warning to all viewers. Timothy Fisher just lied to you, and I will prove it. Call a Kingdom Hall this instant and ask one question. Can I live forever without knocking on doors? Timothy Fisher is the prototypical Jehovah's Witness liar. He proclaims door knocking is not something you do to build up credit. Bullshit. Total, absolute, 100% deception. Ask Timothy to explain why you are instructed to make a monthly record of your time spent and turn it into an overseer 
who then sends it to a company accountant. Scroll down. Furthermore, ask Timothy why the branch accountant, the overseer, and the local elders are all subject to removal if the people working below them fall short of expected numbers in these reports. Ask him why is it if your personal re report comes in below the national average, you are subject to penalties, including loss of unrelated privileges, loss of title, and, as you just read in Timothy's own words and with your own eyes, getting labeled as inactive. An official status in this cult, a derogatory slur that signifies you as spiritually weak and puts you in a low category of diminished respect, even by your own family. Timothy Fisher is employing an old JW propaganda tactic of distracting the issue. Whether Timothy enjoys door knocking or not is irrelevant. Since he is commanded to do it, expected to do it, and held accountable if he fails. Timothy Fisher is on the internet now lying to you because he is obligated to do so. Even if Timothy hated going door knocking, which he probably does <coughs> secretly, he is strictly forbidden from telling you that, or even from telling other JWs that. He would immediately be penalized and faced repercussions. JWs must maintain forced plastic smiles, even if they're suicidal. You see, depressed and suicidal JWs are required to continue door knocking, regardless of any mental illness. Jehovah does not make any exceptions or take excuses. Have you noticed how Timothy is spamming YouTube with a certain .org link? Timothy Fisher is a liar by omission. He decided not to tell you honestly that this spamming activity counts towards his corporate quota, making him eligible for spiritual advancement. Timothy naturally refuses to debate a person with first-hand knowledge of this pyramid scheme and all its lies because he knows that this shady business cannot withstand a detailed scrutiny. And we'll scroll down again. <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. Feels good. Jehovah's Witnesses are deceitful cowards. <laughs> What was I even talking about? I forgot by now. Oh, Jehovah's Witnesses are deceitful and cowards who prey only on sheep. Official watchtower term for gullible persons. And I offer a sworn personal testimony to anyone reading this. I was a delegate at the 2000 annual Pioneer meeting in which we were specifically instructed to seek out mentally and emotionally unhealthy people and impress upon their vulnerabilities. Welfare moms and people grieving dead relatives were listed as human weaknesses we could use to our advantage. <laughs> Please, all who read this, beware. Timothy Fisher acts as a corporate tool, speaking not his own words, but using a carefully crafted prescribed algorithm designed and honed to brainwash the meek and bully them into doing free labor. <laughs> Employing veiled threats, pressures, and other suggestions against anyone who falls to the level of inactive, thereby joining all other non-active persons in an implied fiery death at Armageddon. Here's how you, the viewer, may test the veracity of this statement. Ask an official Jehovah's Witness representative if they recommend you hearing testimonials from former members. When they tell you no, 
then I invite you to return to YouTube, click on any five videos titled Why I Left Jehovah's Witnesses, and listen for yourself. Surely Jehovah God has no objection to that. Um, well, anyway, folks, I'll let you, uh, nah, go do whatever it is you do. Um, <laughs> I don't want to know what you people do. I know some of you here is sick. Mark Sadell. Hate much. And he's, uh, <laughs> he's on the Prince video. We're back at the Prince video again. It never ends. Hate much. Mark Sadell, look at this motherfucker. Look at that fucking face. What is going on with all these grown ass men that looks like babies? God almighty, this man's a grandpa and he has a face like a fucking newborn. Look at that face. Hate much. <laughs> oh shit, I hate all kinds of things, Mark. You don't know the half of it. Anyway, Mark, I have to put him in his place. I say, think before you talk, Mark. It is not religious persecution for an informed person to publicly expose of certain, it's one of those explosing things, certain religion as being false. From the Watchtower Digest of November 15th, uh, 1963. Oh, one of my favorite standbys. I roll that one out again and again. It is, oh, it really makes people change their tune. <laughs> so quickly that they say, whoa, I didn't mean it that like that. Oh, uh, no, I was talking about something else. It is not religious persecution for an important person to publicly oppose a certain religion and bam, bam, you guys. You guys. Get it under control. Me and Mark says, you went on a hate fest against Prince. I just went on a hate fest. Against Prince. Oh, it's a festival of hate. That was my problem with your rather loud tone. Wait, isn't isn't some isn't Prince somebody that plays music in a loud tone? Ah, well that's different. <laughs> so, um, if I was wearing an afro, if I had an afro wig and I was rich and I was Prince, then that would be okay. Well, of course, because that would be a Rather loud tone. I'm an atheist and I don't care what any so-called scriptures or commentaries on them have to say. It seems to me, as a Prince fan since 1979, he has left the organization, you would know. <laughs> it seems evident in his latest releases, or albums as I call them. Think before I talk? Oh, obviously I did. No, Mark. It seems to me, quote unquote, is not submittable evidence from you. You are an outsider with no position in Jehovah's organization. See Revelation 22, 15, in which you will learn that you are an outsider and a dog. So tell me, Mark, why would I listen to a dog? Outside are the dogs, which is you. Someone loving spiritism, idolatry, and every lying thing. Did I miss something? You are a dog, Mark. So why would I have to listen to what a talking dog has to say? I'm a talking dog. You're a bear. Well, I kind of look like a dog. I like puppy chow. On April 23rd, 2009 edition of Tavis Smiley, Prince told the public he is one of Jehovah's Witnesses. A statement he has never recanted or requalified to mean any other thing. Scroll down. Prince claimed he is one of Jehovah's Witnesses, a statement he has never recanted. His continuing friendship 
with J.W. Elder, Larry Graham, deems him, by matter of fact, to be considered good association for Jehovah's people. Please research Jehovah's Witnesses' marking policy and methods, wherein you will learn the procedures of the marking system. Whoa, what is that? Oh, let me tell you about it, Mark. By coincidence, which is also what I'm, t your name. <laughs> the marking policy is a method in which uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, you see, sometimes there are people that are around the periphery of the Jehovah's Witness system that just don't fit in or the other Jehovah's Witnesses don't like them. Look, it's going to happen with any organization. And, oh, hey, let's pretend the prince is just a crazy person that thinks they're a Jehovah's Witness or one or is a wannabe Jehovah's Witness that the other Jehovah's Witnesses don't want. It happens sometimes. And, <laughs> well, what can you do? Because Jehovah's Witnesses officially want people to be Jehovah's Witnesses and want people to try to be Jehovah's Witnesses. But what do you do when somebody isn't technically breaking any Bible rules, so you can't even be mad at them or act like they've done something wrong, you just don't like them. Because they're a fucking douchebag or a weirdo or whatever. Or they're poor or they suck or they're just some idiot that you don't want there. It happens all the time. I don't think Prince really fits in that category at all, but I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and pretend that Prince is a psycho that they just can't rid themselves of, which is obviously not true at all, but we'll go, well, hey, wait, we'll do this. We'll pretend that Prince is just some douchebag that the Jehovah's Witnesses wish they could rid themselves of. Well, there is a provision for that. It's called marking, and it is an official watchtower policy and procedure. And here's how it works. It's a whisper campaign. There's a marking talk given, and the elder who gives this marking talk, he doesn't say the name. He's not going to say the name Prince in the talk or anyone else's name, but he will describe the person and describe their behavior and their mannerisms and even how they look in striking detail. And in case nobody in the audience gets it, in case any somebody's left out of the moot, uh, left out of what's going on, well, the el the elder tells his wife specifically who he's talking about tells tells her the name of the person and she whispers it to her kids and then her kids whisper it to everyone in the congregation and no I'm not making this up this is a real actual corporate policy of the Jehovah's Witnesses this brush fire method where you start you take a match and you start a forest fire that there's no way you can control but hey what the what do the Jehovah's Witnesses care they're just ruining somebody's reputation and turning Hundreds of people against them. What the fuck do they care? It's not them. It's somebody they wish they were rid of. Oh, the person didn't technically do anything against the Bible. Did not break any of God's commandments so that they can legally throw them out before Jehovah God. It's just somebody they don't like. And they wish would go away. So this is how they get rid of them. They start a brush fire. They get a match, some kindle, and some gasoline, and they start a fire. And they spread rumors and gossip about the person until the person feels so disliked and unwelcome that they show themselves the door. It's called marking. Well, how do you know who's not marked? I mean, it's easy to tell who's been marked because there is the gossip mill. But how do you know when somebody's not marked? Well, that's easy. And they will tell you this in the talk. You know if somebody's not marked because the, you'll see the elder. You'll see an elder uh, talking with them and smiling and patting them on the back and shaking their head. If somebody is marked, you will only see an elder chastising them with a frown on their face. And the elder will make it clear that uh, you're not my friend. I don't like you. And that's how you know someone's marked. Because you can see it on their face. The elder doesn't like them. And his wife doesn't like them. And his kids don't like them. And so... They are persona non grata in the world of Jehovah's Witnesses. And that's how you get rid of them. Fuckers. But, Prince is not somebody who's marked. Because he's friends with Larry Graham. Very famous elder in good standing. I'm not making this up. You hear this in talks, you read it in magazines. How do we know who's good association? Because you see the elders associating with them. 
So what am I supposed to think when I see the most prominent elder in America associating with Prince? <laughs> well, according to Watchtower policy, that means he's in good standing. Did I miss something? Because you are not one of Jehovah's Witnesses, Mark. You may be ignorant that Prince's incorporation of the Third Eye Pagan religious symbol in his Saturday Night Live performance is a severe and punishable offense not allowed to be overlooked in our religion. As someone baptized and dedicated to the Jehovah God in association with his spirit-directed organization, I am under solemn duty to report and lay bare this man's apostasy. Whether you like it or not, I was baptized into the spirit-directed organization. Well, what if you've been disfellowshipped or disassociated and you get reinstated? Do they baptize you again? <laughs> I think not. You're baptized one time and for all time. And baptized people are still expected and required to report sins and wrongdoing, are they not? They're expected to report their own sins and their own wrongdoings. You think I'm not going to make a report of this man's sin? This man's heresy against Jehovah God? But you want everyone else to report when they masturbate. You want married couples to report when they use a flashlight <laughs> or a dildo in the bedroom. Or put on leather and spank each other. Or if a man asks his, or his wife to give him oral. Well, that's something that has to be reported to the elders. But not Prince having a third eye symbol on Saturday Night Live. Nobody's supposed to notice that. The millions of people who watch that are supposed to look the other way. And oh, what's, what's that? I don't know what it is. Oh, let's get back out of service. Let's return to our Watchtower study. Nobody's supposed to know this. Nobody has said a goddamn word at the Kingdom Hall, have they? No one at the Kingdom Hall said a word. You know they did it. There is a million Jehovah's Witnesses in the United States alone, and you know they watch Saturday Night Live. You know they stayed up to watch that, and you know the next day at the Sunday meeting, not one of them said a word. You know it. So educate yourself before weighing in, Mark. What you call hate is what Prince's God calls counsel and correction. Please read Psalm 139. <laughs> which says, oh golly, what does it say? I can't even remember now. Oh, I remember. God, do I not hate those who rebel against you? Truly, they are like enemies to me. And since Prince has made himself an enemy of Jehovah God, I think I'm going pretty easy on him, wouldn't you say? Fudge. You guys are kidding me with all this stuff, right? I can't believe this. What's going on with you people? I mean, Mark is at least, I mean, God Almighty, this man's dumb as all get out, but at least he's an, he's an outsider that doesn't know jack shit about anything. What's everyone else's excuse? Ding dong! Anybody home? Jehovah's Witness is calling! Knock, knock, knock! Knock on the fucking door! Who's knocking on your door? The man went on Saturday Night Live with a band called Third Eye Girl, and he has the third eye symbol. He's wearing the third eye glasses. Jesus, do I have to show you a picture? Let me get it for you. Oh, well, well, apparently we have to do everything the hard way. There it is. I'm not making it up. Jesus Christ is disfellowshipping. This is instant disfellowshipping. This isn't... This isn't a mistake. This isn't a misstep. This isn't Robbie confessing his sin of, of oh, oh, I went to a sports bar to have a sandwich. And a girl seduced me by showing her my fish tank. Well, Robbie, the problem is that uh, we have to make an example out of you. This went on for a month, Robbie? You, you, you waited a month to tell us this? Well, how many people in the outside world know about this? Oh... You're begging us not to disfellowship you, Robbie? 
Well, we have, you have to understand we're a clean people. And so we have to make an example so that everybody understands and remembers that we're the clean people. We don't allow this sort of thing. Oh, you have one elder that likes you? Well, he'll have to uh, remit himself from, from the case. He'll have, he won't be allowed to be in the room with you, Robbie, because we have to remain impartial because this is a very serious matter. You went to a sports bar and had a sandwich with a girl that led to sex. Jesus God Almighty, look at this! What universe are you people living in? <gasps> this, is, this is third... Uh, I give up. I don't even care. You people... This is ye... <sighs> what do I care? <laughs> what do I care? If this is what you people want to do. This is my God! This is like something from like the time of b before the flood when Jehovah flooded the earth. This is what was going on. Do you have your Bible story book? Jesus, where is mine? Where did I put that thing? God Almighty. My book of Bible stories, you open it up and it shows the time before the flood. This is how they explain to children why people had to die in the flood. They show them a picture just like this. Good God Almighty. This isn't a sin against Jehovah. This is blasphemy against Jehovah. Third eye. Good Lord. Good Lord. Do you know how many people I've seen disfellowship? I couldn't even count to you. It's in the hundreds. I, I, I could list off for you dozens and even into the hundreds of people I've known who have been disfellowshipped. Because, they're, because of their inability to control their hormones, their bodies. And these people are doing this on purpose. I'm talking about people that tried in earnest to be Jehovah's Witnesses their whole life. Went out in service, donated money. Drove 300 miles to go to conventions. Turned down job interviews. Turned down job uh, promotion opportunities. In their attempt to be a Jehovah's Witness. And at some point in their life, they fail because they accidentally commit a sin. They confess the others, get disfellowship, get their lives ruined. And this man is flouting his behavior. Flaunting this. And the Jehovah's Witness, the Jehovah's Witnesses of the Kingdom Hall systematically refuse to acknowledge it or even admit it. It's not that they are, it's not that they are, Enact it. It's not that they refuse to act upon it. They refuse to acknowledge it. And they will persecute anyone who brings it up or mentions it. Are you still going to play? I, I'm, are we still playing this game of this week, Prince is Jehovah's Witness, next week he's not? It doesn't work for me. It doesn't do anything for me. And they do the same thing with Terrence Howard, too. They say, oh... Isn't it, they say, oh, he's not one. You say, well, what about this new show of Terrence Howard? Well, Terrence Howard's not a Jehovah's Witness. Okay, fair enough. And immediately they'll turn around and talk about how wonderful it is that this man loves Jehovah. This man does not love Jehovah. He, he loves things that Jehovah, God says, is wickedness. He loves the things that Jehovah hates. And then you'll go on any video on YouTube that has Terrence Howard's face on it. And you'll read 40,000 Jehovah's Witnesses orgasming about how this man loves Jehovah. Repellent. God, I'd hate to be in Jehovah's shoes right now. Jehovah, why are you so powerless to do anything about this? God, I miss the old days. I miss the Bible story book days when you used to do something about this. Jehovah, God Almighty, I spent my whole life being jealous for your name for nothing. What a sad day. I never thought this day would come. Jehovah cannot even avenge his own name. Jehovah cannot even stick up for his own name. And the people who have been given this mantle of responsibility refuse to. And in fact, they go out of their way to protect people who enable this behavior and punish anyone who notices it or mentions it. 
This week, Jehovah... Oh, Prince! Ha, <laughs> Brother Prince! How can this man be a Jehovah's Witness? Oh, he's not a Jehovah's Witness. Who told you that? And then as soon as you turn around, he's Brother Prince again. Excuse me if I'm wrong. When someone is disfellowshipped, or disassociated, or marked, they don't, they don't make those announcements to damage anyone's reputation. It's only to keep the congregation in clean and inform everyone. So why isn't there a frickin' watchtower coming out saying, hey, we just want to clear the air. Apparently there's some misconception about this pagan person steeped in false worship. Apparently there's some misconception that this man is a Jehovah's Witness. We just want to state for the record that this man certainly is not a Jehovah's Witness. And if you've seen photos huh, or, or heard personal reports of telling you anything otherwise, oh, well, those people are liars or need to be disfellowshipped themselves. Why isn't Larry Grant being disfellowshipped? Oh, well, his job is a musician. Bullshit. I've seen people lose privileges for selling condoms at a gas station. And it was their job. Excuse me. If you're, if you're Jehovah's Witness, they won't even let you be a police officer because you'd have to carry a gun and handcuffs. And you're a person upholding the law. This man is breaking the law. Well, oh, not really. He's breaking Jehovah's law. It's Jehovah's law. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's not breaking the law. Oh, when you Prince, you probably are breaking the law. I just haven't caught you yet. I will catch you, though, later. These people talk out both sides of their mouth. They live out both sides of their ass, and I'm so sick of it. You will scroll down. You will watch this video, and you will scroll down at the comments, and it's, it's six of each, half dozen of the other. People commenting, saying, he, he is a Jehovah's Witness, and... You, oh, uh, he's the greatest Jehovah's Witness. I know somebody in his congregation. Oh, you haven't seen how he's changed. Ah, and then right beneath that, you'll read another c comment saying, oh, why, why, why are you saying this man is a Jehovah's Witness, JW Fairy Tale? You're spreading lies. This is a trick. Ah, the devil concocted this trick to mislead everyone. Fudge. How many years? I mean, God Almighty, we've been playing this game for, it's coming up on 15, 20 years now. Jesus. I remember this from 1999. We're talking a decade and a half that this routine's been going on. Look, this man, I mean, this man could get, I could, could conceivably get away with quite a bit. He could live all sorts of sin in the privacy of his mansion and get away with it. He comes on TV in front of everyone's face with symbols of false religion. God Almighty! What is wrong with people? It's not one or two people, it's a million people! What? How could this many people be out to lunch? I can't believe I wasted my life on this. You're in disbelief that I wasted 30 minutes making a video about this? I wasted my life on this. Do you get it? The shame of this. Anyway, I forgot what I was talking about. Look at these some of these pictures. Good lord. Good lord. These aren't from the 80s. This is re these are recent photos. No. Oh, Larry Graham's a musician, and he's just, it's just a job. I have known multitudes of Jehovah's Witnesses that were offered some job opportunity, some perfectly sensible job opportunity, and were told to turn it down. Encouraged to turn, and they do this every convention. I'm not making this up. Every convention is littered with stories of people turning down jobs, returning to their minimum wage job. Because it was better for Jehovah. And, and they're not even really clear about it. It's just like, well, we can't guarantee that you get every Sunday off for every meeting. Well, it's better to turn that job down then. And return to wiping shit off the sidewalk. 
for a living. And people clap. Then they say, well, this is Prince's job. It's Larry Graham's job. He's, they don't need the money. You're not going to tell me that this man performed on Saturday Night Live, which in itself is a filthy TV show, and then turned around and went to the Sunday meeting. How many times have you been counseled that if your extracurricular activities on Saturday night interfere with you attending the Sunday meeting, well then, you need to rethink your decisions. You're going to tell me this man performed on Saturday Night Live and then went to a Sunday meeting? Bull pucky. Excuse the language. Bull pucky. It's not about Prince. It's not about Prince. Your hate fest against Prince. Don't you get it? It's not about Prince. Prince came into my world. Prince came into my world. You don't understand. I'm not an invader in his world. He's an invader in mine. You entered my reality. And my reality is not kind. And it will not be kind to you. You have enablers and hypocrites all around you. You don't need one more, Prince. The last thing the Jehovah's Witnesses need right now is more enablers and more people covering their own ass and protecting their own interests. There's nothing in this for me. Do you get that, Prince? I am. <laughs> well, I guess we'll leave it there. I don't know what else to say. My, my, my God. Why? What else is there? Did we cover it? Third eye this is a symbol of false religion. This man loves it. He's steeped in it. It's a disfellowshipping offense. He's not going to be disfellowshipped. It's not even going to be mentioned. Boy, if you were driving down the street looking for a Jehovah, it was, if it was the Great Tribulation and you were driving down the street looking for somebody to save you, you'd drive right past this man, wouldn't you? <laughs> if you were looking for a Jehovah's Witness to say, take me to the Kingdom Hall with you, I want to survive Armageddon, take me into the Ark with you, you would drive right past this scene, wouldn't you? Well, what does that mean? Fudge. <laughs> well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm... Gonna go eat some puppy chow right now. Ah, oh, puppy chow. The breakfast of bears and puppies. Jehovah does not discriminate between bears and puppies. We've learned this. We know this. The prince will be on the ark with us. Third heaven is a place we will reach in the ark. And the ark is not a uh, um, symbolic... Uh, meaning, there will be an ark. It will be made of titanium. And sex will not be allowed on the ark, even between married couples, because the titanium walls carry sound. Third eye. I don't know why that just sounds really dirty to me. <laughs> that just have a, I just have a gross. That's a grody name. 
Reese P. <laughs> I'm, I, it just, it's disgusting to me. And he watched the Prince video. And he didn't like it. So he's going to weigh in. And we'll see what we can do for him. Reese P. says, You're wrong. He does knock on doors. I have one friend that lives in Chaska. <laughs> Seeing him at her door knocking one morning. That's a Jehovah's Witness. Actually went into her house, speaking the word to her. <laughs> I have another friend that goes to Chaska. Oh, he goes to the same hall that Prince goes to in Eden Prairie. As referred to, they refer to him as Brother Prince there. You should really take this video down and try to do some more research. Because you are straight, of course you are going to hate. You know, the music industry is full of people who are doing better than me. I don't hate them. And you expect him to quit his job as a musician? Yes. That is what I expect. It makes sense, doesn't it? Why is he still doing this? He hasn't made enough of Satan's money in his lifetime. He needs more. He needs more of Satan's money in these final moments before Armageddon. What was I thinking? Thinking oh, he should quit his job as a musician and pioneer. What was I thinking? I made an ass out of myself. And give up what keeps him alive? Excuse me! What keeps servants of Jehovah alive, according to Psalms 33, is Jehovah himself looking out for us. He provides our daily bread. Bibles, uh, you have Jesus, he said in the Bible that uh, Jehovah... Doing, doing Jehovah's will is his daily bread. <laughs> That's his food. This to do the will of him that sent me. And not for Prince, though. Prince, what keeps Prince alive is being a jackass. It, it, anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry. That went off the rails. That went off the rails in the worst kind of way. Well, we'll return now. Making music. Hmm. Making music keeps Prince alive. I know someone really needs to quit their job as a journalist. Hint. Well, yeah, you may have a point there. <laughs> I really do need to quit. Why am I doing this? I don't remember. So you didn't like my little insult above? You, wait, this is all in the same comment. How do you know that I didn't like your insult? I, and for all you know, I loved that insult. It took it to heart. You never even gave me a chance, you dick. It's true, though. One clue would be to live by this motto. The best use of life is love. The best expression of love is time. And the best... Why, 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 what is that? I'm going to give you some letters to study before you do your much-needed research on Prince. P, B, and J? Fucking my god, what? No, I have some letters for you, Buck. Y-H-W-H. Learn it. Learn the fear of God. Now, after you figure that abbreviation out, I don't have time for this. Get out of here. Please pray to God for forgiveness. Are you talking to Prince now? I know you're not talking to me. Well, apparently he is. Well, we... Um, we just write a little something back for Reese P. I don't know, that just sounds gross to me. Every time I see that name Reese P, I just imagine dirty orange yellow piss hitting a dirty gas station toilet. Hi Reese, can you tell me what third eye is? And people say, Who, what, who's Morris Day? What are you talking about? <laughs> it just reminded me of this for some reason. At one point, they even go. They even go to this public place where there's a computer, and they get on the internet and start uh, arguing with people about Morris Day. And people are like, "What are you talking about?" Anyway, just remind them of that a little bit. Have you ever heard the term 
you can't build Rome in one day? Well, I've heard, uh, yes, I've heard that term. Have you heard the term or expression, you can't make somebody into a Jehovah's Witness in 15 years? No, you haven't heard that one? Neither have I. What do you expect? He's a mega star musician with a lot of temptations. What temptations are you speaking of? And why would this man have any? This man has every available opportunity to him to shut the world out and live a chaste lifestyle. There's nothing present, nothing prevents him from doing that. He doesn't have to go to a job and associate with worldly people. He can rid himself of that uh, that that thing that mars every other Jehovah's Witness existence. That they have to oh we have to brush elbows with people in the world. You don't have to be around the world. The only contact you have to have with the outside world is witnessing to them. Which, apparently, you and Morris Day <laughs> go and witness to people in Chaska. Whatever. You just went into someone's house in Chaska and witnessed to them. I'm sure that really happened, and it's not a made-up lie. You couldn't even get a girl that Prince didn't want. LOL. Irrelevant. So, of course, great looking like a straight-up fool. That seemed redundant. And yes, there are many mansions and money in Minneapolis. You would know that if you had been there when Prince lived there. I work security for entertainers, singers, and bands that came to Minneapolis. From 1994 to... I'm not going to make you... I'll read this. It is a... He goes on this diatribe here. It's paragraphs long. I'm not even scrolling down. Good Lord, look at this. He goes on a uh, rampage here. Talking about he name drops, name dropping Jimmy Jam, Morris Day, and he goes on this big long spiel. It reminds me of I'm for for some reason this is reminding me of the uh, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back movie. If you've seen it, well anyway, there's these two drugged out guys there. They are just blown out of their minds on drugs, and all day they stand on this street corner. Talk about Morris Day and how he's the awesomest guy who's ever lived and how they uh, they model his their lives after him because he is the greatest human being of all time. And anyway, there's this 12-year-old standing next to him and said, who the fuck is Morris Day? <laughs> and the, uh, the drugged-out guy dr grabs the kid and slams him against the wall. And it's kind of the, uh, the running joke uh, throughout the movie. Is that uh, these guys? These guys that are so out of touch uh, with with the world around them that they don't they don't understand that Morris Day is irrelevant and nobody knows who he is. And they're just it's kind of the gag throughout the whole movie that they keep going places.